This program is intended to be general in nature and should not be used as a substitute for advice from a qualified health provider. On Health Matters, comfort food can be healthy. We're kicking off the new year with delicious recipes here at Second Harvest with Chef Laurent. We are going uh, to make an appetizer with uh, Walla Walla onions, a main course that the whole family is gonna love, and a dessert that will taste as good as it looks. Plus, dietitian Mindy Wallace shares tips on how to eat what you love and stick to your resolutions. Right now on Health Matters. Health Matters is made possible by our viewers, the friends of KSBS, and by Providence Healthcare. My name is Beth Perez, and I am a registered nurse, and I work at Holy Family Hospital on the labor and delivery unit. I'm about to have my second child, and I chose Providence because I love and trust the people that I work with, and why wouldn't I seek care from people that I love and trust? I'm Dr. Andrew Boulay, and when my wife had a cardiac arrest, I chose Providence because I knew that everything we needed for her complex care was available, from the emergency room to radiology to the nursing staff to the specialists we needed for her care. Welcome to Health Matters. I'm Teresa Lukens. We are kicking off the brand new year in the beautiful Second Harvest Kitchen in Spokane with delicious, nutritious recipes to get you going for the new year. And here to share his incredible creations is Chef Laurent. Chef Laurent is the owner chef of Fleur de Sel in Post Falls and Fleur de Sel Crapery in Spokane. And we are excited to have him here to uh, again share his delicious creations. Also with us is Mindy Wallace. Mindy is a registered dietitian. She's gonna help us out with great nutrition choices. And also she has a degree in exercise physiology. So we're excited to tap into that as well. Mindy is the nutrition education manager with Second Harvest. She also supervises AmeriCorps members who teach nutrition education classes to kids, adults, and seniors and support healthy choices in the food pantry. Thank you both for being here. I'm so excited well, thank you for um, us. to get started. Once I got a look at the recipes, I got really excited because Good. not only they uh, are they great looking recipes, but I know that there's some great nutrition value there too. Yep. And something to mix things up maybe. We're, we might be getting a little bored in the kitchen, Chef. Well, you know, it's that time of the year where uh, here at Second Harvest, for example, there's, there's, there's a lot of thing in the warehouse, but not very a lot of fresh produce. So you, you have to manage of mm -hmm. what, uh, what we have. You know, we do a cooking class where, where we pick things in the warehouse and, and uh, we, uh, we, we do what we, with what we have. So the idea is, uh, well, in the winter in uh, Washington, what do we have? Not much. We have uh, a lot of onions. We have a lot of uh, potatoes, always. And uh, we have a lot of apples. They are uh, in your family uh, house, you know, in the root cellar. And uh, I remember my mom having all those things with shallots and, and turnips, all those root vegetables in the, in the root cellar. But decided, because of that time of the year, to do something that is comfortable, mm -hmm. because comfortable food is important in the winter to make you happy. And, you know, no sun, you have to have some food. And, uh, so we have three recipes. Three we're recipes, do. yes. One with onion, one with potato, one with apple. All right, and we're, we're going to pretty much walk everybody through. We're going to start with what yes. would typically be an appetizer, yes. something to start the meal with, and then Completely. a main course, and yes. then a nice dessert. Perfect. All right, and we also want to mention too that you are a regular teacher here at Second Harvest for their yes. classes in this very kitchen. In this very kitchen, I'm very familiar with all around around here with all the equipment and everything, and I love it. I do that once a month. It's been two years, and um, I just cook uh, home cooking, uh, whatever my mom used to to make home, uh, with not much, and uh, just to show them that uh, we will talk about the nutrition, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, you know, when you make your own food, it tastes better. It, uh, no matter how good you are as a cook, and uh, you're sharing something with loved ones, with family, with friends, and that's more important for the heart, for the soul. I think it's very important for them also to uh, understand that uh, you can do a lot with not much. All right, well, let's and, get started then. Uh, and that's uh, what we are doing. So we're doing, a, I like the idea of a, in the winter of a French onion soup. 
the only thing a French will be, because I'm <laughs> French, so it's going to be called a French onion soup. If you're Italian, it'll be an Italian onion soup, or mm -hmm. I don't know. But you know, we have but beautiful Walla Walla onions. That's one yeah. of the specialty of the region. We have beautiful onions. They're sweet. Uh, what I'll do is that uh, I'm going to put uh, some onions. I have already some onions here uh, cooking. Uh, just julienne them, or mince them. Julienne, I think, that's the English uh, term. And Mindy, talk about onions and the nutrition value, because I think people think it's just um, sort of livens up a dish, but really, they're loaded with nutrients. Absolutely. So onions actually have a lot of different vitamins in them, and any time that we can look at not only onions, but just more uh, fresh produce in general and add those to meals, it really boosts the health benefits that you get. Yeah, absolutely. And flavor, too. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. so important to have that flavor element, otherwise we're not going to eat it. Yeah. 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 True. Now, this recipe chef takes a lot of onion, right? Because they, take, they cook down. They cook down, so they reduce. How many onions do you have and in that's, the pot? Uh, I have, uh, I think it was like two pounds of onions for uh, a good uh, dinner for four people. I'm turning that on high. I want to caramelize. Onions have a little bit of uh, a sweetness to it, some sugar. And uh, I added a little bit of sugar with the butter. And you let that simmer a little bit until you don't want to burn the pan. But almost, you want oh. some coloration, caramelization of the onion. So you can see that. Uh, so, about it's a medium high. heat, you don't want to put too much heat yes, on them, right? Yes, medium to high heat. And then uh, you're going to cook your soup on very low heat. And I'll explain why. You're going to make right now with the butter and the flour. I add flour to my uh, soup because. Uh, That's because your thickener? Yes, exactly. And make a, a, a roux. A roux, a very roux. hard for me to say in English. <laughs> so a roux, and uh, then. Uh, and you want to make sure that's really stirred in well, right? Yes, so exactly. The, like this, you'll have less and less uh, uh, clumps. But uh, that's and Mindy, why is it important too to start the meal with something like soup? It, it um, it's not only a great starter, but it fills you up a little bit, so maybe you don't overdo on the rest of the meal. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with things like soup, they're primarily water-based for the most part. Um, but you're able to, if you're looking at watching your weight, really it's filling up on some volume with not a lot of extra calories. And again, it's going to depend on the type of soup. So those broth-based soups mm -hmm. or those clear soups are the ones that are more um, just water-based and you're going to get more volume um, and kind of go from there. So yeah. really that's looking at some of that weight, if you're watching your weight or looking at things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and on a nutrition point, uh, I mean, Mindy will, will agree with me that I did that with butter, but if you prefer to uh, make it with olive oil, mm. you can choose yes. make olive oil, it's better for, for you, it's a better... Uh, Heart healthy choice. Completely, sure. so you can do that too. Same with flour, if you decide you're gluten free, for example, you can always add some gluten free mm. flour, but also at the same time, if you don't, uh, it's not going to ruin the soup. You can skip the, the flour. Uh, you could maybe add some cornstarch at the end to make it a little thicker. I like soups that are not too brothy. I know that by, uh, uh, by experience in this country, I, when I first had an onion soup, it was very liquid, very dark, very liquid. Uh, well, the one I make is, uh, is more like a, a very hearty, very thick. Uh, you know, you could have that uh, as an appetizer, but also as a main course with a little salad, and, and you're good as a, as a dinner. You Absolutely. Know? Like this, I don't know if Mindy uh, agrees, but the, you can eat I mean, maybe a little less heavy by night in order to go to, to, to bed and maybe have a, a, a lesser mm -hmm. uh, heavy uh, dinner. Yeah, by starting yeah. with that soup. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And make it, uh, make it a, a main course. Uh, you know, we. we you, you call it a French onion soup, we call it an onion soup. Uh, onion soup in France are not uh, like, uh, like we do it here. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember having onion soup only once a year. Ah. First of January at 5, 6 a.m., you party all night, you need something <laughs> to reboost. And, and that's where the soup came in. And everybody has an onion home, everybody <laughs> has a little bit of uh, flour, a little bit of broth. And you, the hosts make an onion soup. You eat that onion soup, and then you can drive home. That's that's the idea of the <laughs> onion soup. So now that I have my uh, flour, I have my roux. I'm going to turn it back on uh, right here, and I'm going to add some uh, broth. Uh, I have beef, beef broth. You can have veal stock. You can add uh, also uh, 
I'm going to add some uh, sherry white wine. Ooh, that gives uh, it a nice kick. Yeah. Yes, sherry wine. You can add white wine, port. I have some friends that make uh, their onion soup with port wine also. That gives a, a little more sort of sweetness mm -hmm. to it. And some water. Water. Mandy, talk about your involvement with Second Harvest and how you fit in as a dietitian. Yeah, so I'm able to really guide our AmeriCorps members in leading some classes for the community every single week. So I help support them in whatever they need to um, teach classes for adults, for kiddos, for seniors, um, here in the kitchen and then also out in the community. So um, just provide them that support that they need, encourage them along the way, make sure that we're really having a consistent message around um, healthy eating and keeping it simple for everybody. I mean, let's, let's make it simple, provide people with the information they need to really make those informed decisions about their health. Yeah, so when they are making those choices, they, they're loaded with that knowledge before they uh, even head into a pantry or even a grocery store for that matter. Absolutely, yeah. and, and giving people, like empowering people to make the choice for themselves. I mean, all foods can fit, but at least they have the knowledge to understand which foods are better for their health. Right, right. Okay, we've so got I'm, the soup. I'm simmering, uh, that's going to cook soup. down for a while. I'm going to put uh, bay leaves and a little bit of thyme. If you have fresh thyme, you just add a little bunch of French thyme and you can remove it at, uh, at the end of the cooking time. Oh, I'm going to so add good. some uh, 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 pepper, black pepper, and some salt. Uh, always under salt uh, a dish because uh, you want to finish it, you want to season it at the end. You can always. Mm -hmm. uh, Add salt at the end, you cannot right. remove it. And again, it. if you're trying to restrict salt, just right. skip do it. as, as yeah. needed. That's the beauty. I think people forget with recipes, uh, especially if they're not very comfortable in the kitchen, they want to stick right to the recipe, mm -hmm. but you can make those needed changes. Oh, absolutely. I, and I, I, uh, I, I always tell people, a recipe, it's like a trail. You walk on that trail, it's, it's give you a direction. But if you want to go off the trail and smell the roses or look at that waterfall, do it. Because it allows you to make your own. And there's nothing better and more uh, exciting than to change a recipe and, and make it yourself. Make it uh, your own recipe. Make it to your taste. And uh, I think it's very important. It will taste better. Mm -hmm. You'll be more happy. Uh, and you might have a failure or two, but what the heck, right? Yeah. <laughs> it happens. It's okay. Yeah, I, it's okay. I do all the time. So, you know, and, and yeah. this is my Tri job. Trial and error sometimes. This is my job. Yeah. Trial uh, and error. Uh, when you, uh, I, I really advise people and your audience to, uh, when they, they're looking at a recipe on a cookbook, read it once, twice, then close the book and do it. And don't go step by step. Try to understand the ID. And, and go for it, yeah. and jump. Absolutely. And that's the best, the best way to Absolutely. do a, a recipe. Now, what would be the ideal simmering time for this soup? So I like, uh, you know, soup takes time. Mm. Any soup takes time, it's slow simmer. You want to do it on low and stir time to time because there is flour. The flour will go on the bottom of the pan and it's easy to burn a soup like this because of the flour. So stir it time to time on simmer for approximately an hour. Okay. Yep. All right. And then we have a, a, we have a one soup that's been that cooked. been cooked for oh. an hour. And we are going to, uh, to yeah, gratinate let's, Yeah, let's show yeah, how you do uh, that. So we're going to try to, uh, not try, we're going to do it. So Mandy, we, t we tend to label food. We tend to say foods are bad or foods are good. It's all food. It's just how we use it and how much we eat and when we eat it. Isn't that true? It, and and when, we, when we say healthy food, that some people are turned off by that, we, it's just food. It is food. <laughs> and I mean, the reality of a lot of people just don't have access to food. So when we start labeling it as good or bad, it creates all sorts of challenges. So what's important is that what you have, make use of, as Chef was talking mm -hmm. about. Um, but the more that we can try to really focus on bringing in some whole foods, so fruits, vegetables, produce, whole grains like that, we know there's evidence that supports. It's really good for our health. And so the more we can do that, the better we are. But yeah, yeah it's make things work. Don't restrict. Um, if you really want a, something sweet, I mean, have it. Otherwise, you're not setting yourself up mm -hmm. for success. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, the one thing we probably, if we were going to say there were bad foods, would be more of the processed foods that we want to try to avoid a lot of. 
It's better to yeah. avoid processed foods oh, yeah. for sure. Okay. All right. But so so we'll uh, we'll finish it with uh, uh, I wrote on the recipe day day old bread because we as I grew up we never threw a, a piece of bread in the garbage uh, if it was uh, going very old even the birds <laughs> would eat it. Okay. So no, never in the okay. garbage. But uh, you always have bread. You can always make crouton for your salad. Uh, that's better than buying the crouton already made. You can make bread pudding. You know, there's tons of things that you can do with day-old bread, and one of them is... Uh, uh, and it looks like you're using uh, what, uh, some sort of baguette. It is a baguette, okay. yes, because it's a French onion soup. <laughs> 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 then I have some uh, Parmesan. Uh, you can use uh, Gruyere, you can use Comté, that's the traditional uh, cheese, but Parmesan works great. And I'm gonna gratiné it. So just gratiné, you put it on the broiler, the soup is hot anyway, so you don't have to warm it up. It's just to gratiné to make a mm -hmm. nice uh, coloration on top. And somebody will need to remind me about that in the oven, otherwise oh. it's gonna burn. But okay. uh, talking about good food and bad food, uh, I truly believe that fresh produce, that's one. No matter what, mm -hmm. like Mindy said. Make if, sure you have some yeah, every exactly. day. Okay. If you make a tart, a cake, well, that's, that's okay. You can have it, it's sweet, it's not supposed to be great, but it's better than a pie that you're gonna buy frozen in a supermarket that is excessively uh, amount of corn syrup or whatever they put in, I don't know. You know, sometime, look at labels. And if you cannot understand the label, don't buy it, don't eat it. Yeah. That's my, 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 my well, and I rule think number one. The good news is, too, is that the industry is starting to make those labels easier to read. Finally. Definitely. They were so convoluted and hard to read before. And we're finally getting that a little more clear picture on labels. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see on newer labels, the calories are bolded and they're much bigger. There's also a section on there that talks about added sugars. And so um, the recommendation is to not have more than 10% of your daily calories to come from these added sugars, where the old label had all sugars together. So there's a lot of really great sugar in fruit, in milk, in um, plant sources, um, and you couldn't tell what's what. So now on this new label, there's an added sugar like section on it, so you can, you're aware of how much you're taking in that's added to the product. Okay, and I think that's greatly beneficial. You know, we want to talk a little bit more too about Second Harvest and the work that they do here. Julie Humphreys is the Community Relations Manager for Second Harvest and she tells us more about the food pantry and actually how they're using this kitchen. We are a food distribution center so we resource and distribute millions and millions of pounds of beautiful fresh produce and other shelf stable items all year long to feed 55,000 people every week. That's how many people line up at a food bank or a food pantry or a mobile market throughout eastern Washington and North Idaho. So that's our number one job, to get food to the people who need it most. The kitchen fits into our overall mission at Second Harvest because we are really attempting to provide healthy food to every person every day. And the kitchen is just an avenue for us to help people know what to do with the beautiful product that we distribute to them and to get them excited about eating well. And really, you're going to eat better foods if you know how to do it and can have some simple recipes at hand. And we offer classes at no charge to anyone who needs that nutrition education, who needs to learn some basic cooking skills. And they just go to our website, sign up, and that really we're trying to change the health of the community. And we do it one step at a time and one class at a time. And it's a great way to do it through Second Harvest. If you take a paid class here, you help pay for someone who can't afford to take a class. So it's a win-win all around. All right, Chef, what ingredients do we need for our French potato beef bake? So for, for that big potato... The American potatoes, version. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's a twist. You know, I've been here too long not to make it uh, as a twist. This is a, a traditional dish called uh, Hachis Parmentier. Every mom in uh, France and dad uh, will make it home because it's easy and it is good and it's comfort food for the winter. It's perfect. Uh, we'll need potatoes, russet potatoes. And then we'll need uh, uh, some uh, ground beef, uh, onions, garlic, some fresh herbs, some cream, some butter. If not cream and butter, milk, fat-free milk. If you wanna uh, please uh, the you know your diet, 
and um, if not butter, just a little bit of olive oil instead of, uh, of butter. And um, just usually in France, we do it as a, uh, a dish, like a gratin dish. Mm -hmm. It looked like when I looked at the recipe, a shepherd's pie, is that another name in for French, it? In French, it's a chipamonti. In England, it's, it's okay. shepherd's pie. Yes, okay. exactly. So in, in France, we do it in a gratin dish, but I thought, well, people love baked potatoes in the US, right? And I love them. And most of what I like about baked potatoes is that, well, I'm going to wash my own potatoes. And because I'm washing my own potatoes, I'm going to be able to eat the skin because that's what I prefer in the potatoes. Uh, Mindy can, uh, I'm sure, approve or I hope you approve, but a lot of nutrients are in the skin more than in the, in the center of the potatoes. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. So potatoes are actually a really rich source of potassium. And I think a lot of people just automatically think bananas when oh, they have true, potassium, yeah. but potatoes actually have more than a, when, than a banana. And what happens a lot of times, it's really what we put on the potato that can make it a little bit less <laughs> healthy for us. So um, I'm curious to see how, you know, Chef Laurent is able to transform the potato, awesome. but absolutely, the skin is a really rich source of the vitamins, the minerals, and potatoes are a great source of potassium. Mm -hmm. Well, and what I like too about this is that the potato is gonna be the star, mm -hmm. and the main course itself, we're not adding a lot of other um, elements to this main course. The potato is going to shine with all of the other ingredients that Chef has. Yeah, absolutely. So they're well, well washed. <laughs> That's very hard to say. Uh, Welsh. They are Welsh. No, they're not Welsh. They are well washed potatoes. And because. Uh, and this is just a russet potato. It's a plain russet potatoes. And uh, if you are hungry, take the biggest one. If you're not as. Uh, uh, if you're more conscientious of your diet, you take a smaller one. Uh, they are from uh, Idaho or Washington. Anyway, we mm -hmm. produce, I think, 80% of yeah. the production uh, in the United States on, besides our, with our two uh, states. Because I'm going to eat it, I'm going to put some salt on it. It's going to stick to it. It's mm -hmm. going to look good. But and you don't have to oil them or anything? You just nothing. Use, just oh, bake. Okay. Like, that's how uh, you can do a baked potatoes. And it's better for you because you don't have to add any kind of fat to it right now weight because the inside is going to have some fat. Uh, you just bake it at uh, 350, 375 for an hour. Uh, I fork them. I don't know if you noticed, but I, I mm -hmm. punched some holes in it just to help them to cook a little faster, but not necessary either. Uh, I always thought they'd explode. <laughs> well, I, think I don't know. Yeah, well, Maybe they will. I think it helps with that. Hopefully, not, I, I hopefully yeah. not today. Sure hopefully not good. today. We won't test the, uh, no. that theory. And, uh, uh, you know, when people say, oh, how long does that cook? And well, it's done when it's done. So an hour or 45 minutes. And it's going to depend on size, Exactly. Right? Okay. So always uh, take the tip of a knife and uh, uh, just put the knife through. If you feel that it's very soft, it's done. OK. okay. So right. now we're going to do our uh, shepherd uh, pie. The filling? Uh, filling, okay. yes. The filling will be made with the mashed potatoes that we're making out of those baked potatoes, and some ground meat. If you don't like uh, uh, beef, well, use lamb. You can use pork, a sausage. Uh, any kind of ground meat will, will work. You want something leaner and less uh, fat than, uh, than the ground uh, beef, you can use ground turkey, which is a, oh, a, great, a, great, uh, a great alternative. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good. Um, grades of meat as well. So you can you can find ground beef in various like leanness to say. So like yeah, that has fact, how much fat. Talk about that because I see that 80% mm -hmm. or 90%. Yes. What are we looking for? Yeah, so that's just a, the percentage of fat that's added to the beef. And so the when you see it says like 93% lean, it just yeah. has less fat in it. And that fat is the saturated fat that we want to mm. keep down Low. yeah, in our diets. So. Yeah, because this looks like a very lean. Very lean. That was a yeah. grass fed uh, that we found uh, here at the second harvest. Uh, grass fed, yeah, oh, they have great produce. And I was thinking also, I, was, uh, I heard Mindy saying grades of, uh, of beef. And, mm -hmm. I, and I, I, because of my English, you can tell. I heard grains, but I thought, well, maybe you can. Let's say oh, you're a could vegetarian. you make it? Yeah, could you make it vegetarian? Of course. What make would you some use? Quinoa, ah. lentils, something with a little bit of texture, you know, because the mashed potatoes is kind of baby food, you know. And uh, as a cook, you always want to 
uh, try to be diverse about the, what you put on the plate. Something soft, something crunchy, something sweet, something acid, something, you know, to have some nuance on, on your plate for the customer. Uh, the customer. There is, <laughs> there is a restaurant guy who's talking. For your guest to uh, enjoy what they have in, uh, in, uh, in the palate. So when you have something like baby food, you always want to have some crunch. But quino quinoa would be good. Uh, what do you think about something else? I like else? the lentil idea. Lentils? Yeah, because I yeah. love lentils. You, cook, you undercook them a, a touch. Yeah, so you get that little bite yeah. to them. Or you, you, uh, you get uh, those uh, black lentils, those uh, uh, caviar lentils. Mm. Belu, belu, mm -hmm. uh, oh, they are delicious. Yeah. I'm going to add uh, some, uh, some uh, garlic, some onions, just chop roughly. You know, Chef mentioned the quinoa. We're hearing more about ancient grains, kind of one of those buzzwords yeah. in cooking right now, which includes, uh, well, exactly what they are, grains that were used hundreds of years ago, and now they're coming back because of their nutrition value and their filling and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, so you hear a lot about quinoa. It's kind of mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the buzzes. I've also heard a little bit more about um, just kind of some of those not so common whole grains like pest and millet yeah. and things like that. But I mean, most importantly is just trying to have a variety of different grains. So often we get caught up in our breads and our pastas and they're all coming from wheat. Whereas what would it look like to have a little bit more oats or some rice in there and just really looking at um, whole grains when we're talking about those because there's all sorts of great nutrition that's found in that whole grain versus the uh, more refined grains that you'll see. Right. So. So those are buzzwords, cauliflower right now. Oh my gosh, <laughs> cauliflower's gone nuts. There yeah. is, there's hundreds of products made out of cauliflower. It's kind of the it vegetable yeah. right now. Um, you like your cauliflower trend? The, I, so cauliflower, I, the way I'm seeing it used in the store right now is as a replacement then for some of those, for wheat. And I think that really stems from kind of uh, like a gluten intolerance oh. that you're hearing about or celiac disease. Um, with that, which is just stuff that's just really um, intestinally, like you don't feel good when you have that. So people are finding creative ways to kind of remove those foods that have gluten in them. Um, and cauliflower is one of those. Yeah, right cauliflower yeah, and all great. vegetables that you're seeing, but you see yeah. like pizza crusts and all sorts of yeah. like cauliflower substitutions. Yeah. yeah, kale was so last year. <laughs> We're not eating as much kale as we used to, yeah. but that was a, another it vegetable. Part of the promotion from, obviously, from those industries, I think, that comes up oh, that yeah. gets us to buy into those. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, when we bit. can just look at... It's not as if it's going to hurt us in any no, way, but no, yeah. No, no. Just the variety. If we're able to incorporate a variety of different types of vegetables, of different types of grains, that's really what's known to be most helpful and to really focus on that whole grain sources. Um, yeah, that's yeah. what's best for us. Try a few things, you mm -hmm. know? Just Give it a give it a shot. See what works. All right. So we are still sautéing our, our oh, taco meat. And, that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> little, uh, looks a little like taco meat. A little bit. Like, you know, a little but, bit. But after you you want to change it also. You can add any kind of spice you want. You like uh, to make it a little more East Indian. Mm -hmm. Put some curry. Uh, you want to make it a little more Italian. Add uh, some. Uh, uh, I don't know, but uh, something uh, like olives, right. sun-dried tomatoes, yeah. and make it different. You know, I, it's up to you. This is not my creation, creation. It's just the recipe. Take it and play with it a little bit, yeah. I would be happy to see that. Well, and that's a great way to, to substitute salt, too, is to add more flavor with, with herbs Absolutely. and spices. Yeah, so um, we have a tendency to over-salt things, especially in like packaged foods and prepare, uh, mm -hmm. like when you're going out to eat, they have a lot of salt in them. But one way when you're doing, when you're cooking yourself is really to use some of those fresh herbs or dried herbs mm -hmm. to really enhance flavors without a lot of extra salt in there. And, yeah. and cook, cook with the season. I mean, everybody, no matter where you are, you have a window at home that brings some sun, grow a little bit of herbs. That's Yeah, it only takes a little pot oh, it and they take, take off. Much. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And in the summer, well, you have the abundance of those fresh herbs and, and it's great. Unfortunately, in the winter, it's a little tougher. So what you do is that, well, you preserve them. You dry them out in the summer, you have the abundance, you keep them for the winter. That's what our ancestor used to do, you know, keep things in the root cellar for go through the winter until the spring. And the same with herbs, with uh, everything uh, uh, that you can get access with fresh produce, cook with the season. What's in Available the... right now. Yes. Like right now, strawberry 
is wrong. <laughs> Something is wrong with strawberries right now, right? It's not the season. I yeah. know that everybody's craving for <laughs> Valentine's Day to get a strawberry, but you know, in the winter, it's not maybe uh, it's not maybe the right time of fruit that you you should cook. So seasonal is very important. So I have my meat cooking now. I have those uh, potatoes that have been. Uh, Nice and softly nice and baked. Soft, yep. And you probably should let these cool down before you handle them. A little bit, little yes. Bit. Yes, you, you do. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself. And you don't want to do that. So I'm going to put a, a little uh, incision. Oh, that sounds like a surgeon here. Oh, well, An you incision. work like a surgeon over no, here. I, you I do. Don't. And I'm going to press them side to side, like, okay. you, yeah, like you would do for your baked potatoes. And then I am going to... Uh, you're going to take the insides out? Completely, ah. and make a mashed potatoes out of it. Oh. And when you bake them like this, rather than boiling a potato, you get a fluffier potato oh, to work with. Completely, and uh, and because we didn't put a, any extra fat or anything on, on, on it, it's just a pure uh, pure nut nut nutrition right now. I have a feeling, though, you're going to be adding a little of that to the potatoes. Well, you know, I'm French, <laughs> and uh, I cannot cook without uh, without butter or cream. But you use cream and butter that are, to me. Natural. It's, mm -hmm. it's something natural. It's nothing that uh, I was uh, raised uh, uh, in the 60s, 70s. I'm that old, but I was raised with. Uh, it was the big thing of margarine, margarine. Mm -hmm. margarine, and my mom had margarine. And when I think about it, I'm like, Well, because we were told that it was the it was better. Choice. Yeah. So a little bit. So of as long as we don't use a lot of butter. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's an important part of the diet as well. We don't need to, to think that, oh, we completely need yeah. to eliminate it. It's a very important part, but it's just really calorie dense, um, and it's important to be aware of that and to know that we're not adding too much because um, for our overall health, we want to make sure that we're you know, in, a good, in a good point of uh, kind of balance of calories mm -hmm. in, calories yeah. out. Again, it's one of those things we demonized. Butter yeah. was bad, eggs were bad. Mm -hmm. They're not bad, it's just how you use them and how much, yeah. you know, how much moderation. You okay. sure. so All right, so I did, I did put uh, uh, some uh, the potatoes, salt, pepper. A traditional thing in the mashed potatoes in France is uh, nutmeg, a touch of nutmeg. I've started doing that. Oh, uh, it's delicious. Uh, it's delicious, yeah. Uh, cream and butter. Okay. But you could do skim milk, a little touch of olive oil, and you would be set. All right. And if you don't want to put anything, just don't put anything, just mash it. If you don't have a mixer, smash it the old way with a, a potato. Uh, Again, they're nice and fluffy. They're oh, going to break down really perfect. easy. Perfect. I'm going to yeah. put them in the, All right. in the mixer right now. Turn and Mindy, while Chef is mixing, um, it is the time of the year when we have those resolutions in place. We, you know, some of us want to lose weight, get fit. Um, do you like any of the, the marketable diets out there? I am um, not endorsing any one diet, but rather try to take uh, an approach of looking at um, maybe more of my plate, really is what we talk a lot about here, but having variety in the food groups, right? Uh, lots of colors and fruits and vegetables as much as we can. So it's just really about that like variety of food groups, trying to keep it really simplistic and not look for this really quick change, because change, especially with weight, uh, it takes time. And um, there's all sorts of different eating preferences. Um, you could be vegetarian, you could, um, all sorts of different things. And just know that those all work. And if we I can think, just isn't focus portion on control gonna be a key part of that? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And everyone's needs are very, very different. So it's figuring out um, what your needs are and then catering to what works for you and really looking at how can I try to choose whole foods as much as I can when they're available, look at colorful fruits and vegetables, the whole grains, variety of protein sources when I can. Yeah. Be conscious. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we eat sometimes just mindlessly Absolutely. and we want to enjoy our food and, and make every bite worthwhile and nutritious and... Completely. Yeah, and that's something the French could teach oh, the Americans. Like everything well, yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, always at first, when I arrived in, in, in this country 20, 20 some years ago, I was amazed with the portions. You know, and, well, we if you like, don't we like have big a, food, yeah. If you don't so have true. a 12 ounce ribeye steak, well, and uh, you know, in, in France, a portion of meat is four ounce. Four ounce of beef is plenty. Uh, you know, in, the plates are smaller, everything is smaller. So if uh, you want to eat whatever you want to eat, it's not. 
actually what you're gonna eat, it's how much you're gonna eat. Right. So, but I'm, I'm guilty. I mean, if I have a, well, a pint of ice cream yeah, in the <laughs> freezer, it's done. So, Don't buy the ice cream, that's key. <laughs> never. Yeah. So I'm gonna right. fill that uh, potatoes with- All right, with got them all mashed. Gosh, they're beautiful. Yeah. Nice Very and fluffy. fluffy. Then I'm gonna put some ground meat with inside. Our onion and herbs and yep, exactly. garlic in there. This is a kid-friendly meal. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think kids would have a ton you know, of fun loading that up and yeah. being able yeah, to let layer it. It's like a parfait, a potato parfait. <laughs> and on top of that, it's a, it's a perfect to go. Because if you like, you know, for your kids for lunch, lunch box, you, yeah. you could do this? Oh, why not? Oh, I guess Just so. put it in a lunch box. It's easy to carry. You can yeah. even put in a aluminum foil and that's it. Or for your husband going to work instead of yeah. going to a, a, a franchise, a, uh, fast food yeah. uh, place. Pack this. All exactly. right. So the potato and the and we we're layering it, I guess, layering. basically, yeah. right? Yeah. Some meat, some meat, potato. some potatoes. <laughs> Put it. In. Most important is <laughs> the right. cheese on top. So I have some uh, some blue cheese from uh, from uh, from Idaho, actually, Ooh. from Deary, Idaho, from Brush Creek. And this uh, is cheese of choice. Cheese of choice. Uh, blue cheese, cheddar. Uh, I have some avati, some gouda, some parmesan, some mozzarella. Depending also on your diet, if you want something leaner, drier, a little less fat, you know, Parmesan. Mm -hmm. um, my favorites are goat cheese. I love goat cheese, so goat cheese on top would be uh -huh. fantastic. Pepper jack, I love Ooh, pepper jack. Yeah. I didn't know pepper jack before I came here <laughs> in the United I love it's pepper wonderful, jack. It's wonderful. I know yeah. it is. Yeah. And then uh, right. because uh, everything is uh, quite hot already, you just put it back in uh, the oven. Mm -hmm. and, and then we've got some completed. We do. I'm excited to Let's see these. Let's see how they are. They are nice and crispy About and toasty. About how long in the oven do we, we oh, bake Oh, we want to bake them again for 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 350. And uh, I would go right in, cut it, and eat the skin because it's going to be nice and crispy and delicious. And, and I know it's clean, so it's going to be a perfect, uh, perfect dish. All perfect right. dish with a little salad. Just per salad. perfect main course. Perfect Mindy, break dish. it down for us. Uh, again, it's adjustable to needs, but as we see Chef's creation here, what are we looking at? Yeah, so the I love that it has using the potato as like the holster for it, and that really plays a lot into like portion control. So you can control what size of potato that you want. If you, like you said, if you have access to a bigger one and need a bigger one and want a bigger one, go for it. I, I love it. Um, and then you have really a, a great mix of not only the vegetable that's in there, the potato that's the base, mm -hmm. but then you have a, a good protein source in there, the cheese, which adds a nice mouthfeel, a nice fillingness to it. It looks really good. And I'd say that, you know, a, a medium sized potato, which I would call that, you know, medium, maybe a little bit bigger than medium, would be probably around, I don't know, maybe like 250, 300 calories. But again, it's what works for you and what your needs are. So don't get too hung up on the calories. Just know that having um, it's just a nutritious and tasty food is really what, what matters. And don't, okay. don't overindulge yourself mm -hmm. and just appreciate what you have. And I would say that, uh, if it's good for uh, your uh, brain, it's good for yeah, your body. It's going to feed the soul too. It's going to. Okay, do that. that is our French potato beef bake. Now we're going to be moving on to dessert. Dessert. I cannot finish a, a, a meal without a sweet. Uh, I have a big sweet tooth. That's a big problem. But we're using fruit. Exactly. Right? That's my Which excuse. Which is the best sweet? <laughs> so, have an apple. Yeah, I'll make a tart. You know, that's the that's a good excuse. Yeah. So, so what is the name of this? So it's a it's a just a simple apple tart. It's the classic one. It's not a pie. There's several kind of tarts in France. Uh, one is the Alsatian tart. This is a what called a tart en bande. So it's a lengthwise. It's made with puff pastry and apple, and everybody can do it. It's Easy. I mean, a kid could do it. Well, so. what I love about this too, because I got a peek at it, it's so elegant. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, it is. It is pretty. Yeah, and, don't you uh, agree? Yeah, it, yeah, is it is pretty, and uh, and it uh, it makes you look good. It well, makes yeah. you look like a pastry chef, you know, which I am not. But anyway. So how uh, do we get started? Well, we you have to make your apple sauce. Uh, I truly believe that uh, people that buy apple sauce don't I need to. No, they exactly. don't need to. I didn't okay. want to say something very polite, but <laughs> all right. 
I won't say I, it. I caught you there. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, you just, just so easy to make. Yeah. And uh, we have apples through the winter here. We have so many variety of apple. Don't be afraid. I always go, you know, for the, the same one, the Fuji, the Gala, the, the, all those apples. I love the Honeycrisp. And, mm -hmm. and uh, just try them, you know, and, and it's not what people say. It's what you like in life that matters. And uh, there is uh, those grocery stores with 20 kind of apples, and it's fantastic. It's right now, it's right there, it's yeah. at our door. We have, to, uh, we have to, to, to take advantage of that. So apples, uh, I found a, a tool that I bought one and I sent one to my mom because I think it's the greatest piece of engineering in the 20th <laughs> century that I found for cooking. Yeah. It's that uh, tool that, uh, that allows you to call peel and slice an apple at the same time. So you just go like this and... <laughs> wow, everybody <laughs> needs one of those. Oh, you know what, put the kids to work doing that, yeah. right? And if it breaks, it's okay because we don't care. Well, we're yeah, we're just going to cut doing, that up, right? Exactly, we're cutting oh that up. Gosh. We're gonna put It this. made nice little ringlets. Oh, completely, yes, look at that. So, because that, that's, the, you know, when you think about making an apple dessert or a recipe, Oh, I gotta peel the apples, then I gotta cut them up. You yes. talk yourself out of it. Know. You know, this. I love yeah. that. That tool, if only it could stick here, that's perfect. Here, in there, another apple. Now these are on the small side, these apples. Yeah. So how many are you going to use in I'm this recipe? I'm gonna use uh, three, four. Okay. But at home, I advise you to, uh, to uh, uh, proportionate that recipe and make a, make a bag, make it five pound. And, uh, It'll keep in the fridge? Freeze it. Oh. Take it in a Ziploc, zip it fine. Uh, you freeze it flat like this. It's easy to uh, store in your freezer. Remember that you have that in the freezer because the problem of uh, freezing is that you you put, yeah, you put, you true. put, and, and uh, seven, eight months, a year later, so, <laughs> well, yeah. I had applesauce in I the freezer, I had applesauce. Yeah. So <laughs> always remember that you have them, but I think it's a good way, same with the soup. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Always do a, a, a bigger batch, and uh, you can always... Yeah, then on those busy nights, you have something you can heat up. Completely, yeah. or, uh, or you have a, a, rain, uh, a freezing rainstorm, and uh, you say, I don't want to go out to the restaurant. I have stuff right, right there ready to eat. So, yeah. so make a little, uh, a little uh, uh, bigger batch. So right, apple so stores, a little bit of uh, water, not much. There is plenty of water in apples. A little bit of sugar. Uh, I'm not too fond of, uh, and I like sweet, too fond of very sweet apple sauce. I think there's plenty of sugar in the apple, for that matter. Just a touch, and if you don't want to put sugar, I'm with you. Don't put any sugar. Mm -hmm. A little bit of uh, cinnamon, but please, a little bit. Oh. Not a lot, you know? Uh, there's nothing, to, but that's my personal taste. Nothing worse than Having an apple tart and you don't taste the apple. Ah, the only you just thing want to be able to a little hint, a hint of the cinnamon. A in hint there. of cinnamon and a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla will help to enhance the, the, the flavor of, uh, of the apples. We're going to cook that on a medium heat with a touch of water. You, uh, you make sure that uh, you uh, watch it okay. and you cover it, you know, okay. because you don't want to evaporate too much that liquid and caramelize it and make a uh, a, a brown uh, apple sauce. You want to cook it slowly, 30 minutes, 35, 40 minutes until the, the apples are very soft. Right. And then you can blend it in the, the food processor. Just go through the food okay. processor. Uh, and one if you don't have a food processor, could you do it by hand? By hand or okay. uh, get the old the food mill. You know, that works yeah. great. Mm -hmm. You know, food mill mm -hmm. works great. For the mashed potatoes, the same way. The only thing that would do it with the food processor is the mashed potatoes. Uh, there is a... a I don't know what Mindy can tell us. Maybe uh, it's very elastic when you do it with the yeah, food they, processor. They I break think down or something. They just yeah. are very elastic, and it's not fluffy. It's not uh, uh, silky. Yeah. It's very elastic. So don't do a mashed potatoes on the food processor, okay. just on the mixer. All right. How's he doing so far with the apple recipe? 
Uh, I think it looks great. And Chef Laurent made a great point about the apples just being naturally sweet. Mm -hmm. And we think about you know where we're at in Washington. It's such an apple rich region that we're so fortunate to have all these. So we know that that sweetness is really, I mean, the apple's coming off the tree. It's not traveling far and here we are you know, making the best use of it that we yeah. can. Yeah, and using a combination of those apples would be wonderful because oh, yeah. you're going to get slightly different flavors from tart to sweet mm -hmm. uh, in there yes, and create yes. a whole different flavor yeah. profile for and, your and applesauce. When you, when you make an apple sauce also, look for the bargain. Oh, well, these What's apples sale, are, right? you know, 80 cents a, a pound. Well, go for it. Mm -hmm. Buy 10 pounds. You'll have applesauce for the right. rest of the of the year, or maybe. Yeah, you know? which is the very reason too that that you're using this recipe in one of your classes that you teach at Second I Harvest. I do. They have access to apples because a lot of uh, producers donate apples to uh, Second Harvest, and once again, we do things with what we have here in the house. All right. And we have plenty of bins in the warehouse with apples, and uh, we decided to make uh, that okay. uh, that dessert. So Let's say we have our our applesauce all ready to go. What's next? Next, the puff pastry. You don't make it. You buy it. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why? It's nice. If you are a, a food, uh, if you're a pastry chef, mm -hmm. a baker, you have, the, uh, you have the tools, you have everything to make easy puff pastry. At work, even myself, I don't make it. Right. Why? Because it takes a long time. It takes a lot of elbow, grease elbow. You know, if you have to right. roll, if you don't have a, a sheeter or a, a, an electric roller, it's going to take a lot of time. Just buy it. Okay. Just buy it. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna do two. So this is how it comes in one sheet one like that. One sheet like okay. this, and if it does not, you make yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna this. We're gonna you egg wash. Egg wash. Okay. The sides here. Which is just egg and a little bit of water. Yep. Egg yolks and a little bit of water, just a touch. But if you like this. And I use uh, I use uh, this uh, material that is uh, a really One of the silicone. Uh, oh, I think uh, that's uh, that's a great uh, parchment paper would work as parchment well. Parchment with with uh, with uh, would stick sometimes. It depends. Mm. You know, if you have too okay. much sugar pouring out from sometime, the apples. Yep, yeah. exactly. You you may have a, a problem with uh, with caramel and uh, caramel stick to to that. So I recommend uh, uh, silicone pads. They are. They are the second best invention in the 20th century <laughs> after the apple core. <laughs> then I'm going to put back uh, that, uh, that egg wash on top to make it uh, nice and shiny and golden. And then uh, we have uh, already some. Uh, Oh, the oh, beautiful the apple sauce. sauce. We have some apples. You know, Chef mentioned something, um, Mindy, too, about you know putting the apple sauce in the freezer. Mm -hmm. What a great snack to to pull out when you need something and you've got you just need a little something in between meals to hold you over. That's nutritious. You're not going to grab for something that might not be as healthy for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think about this with kiddos too. I mean, what a great um, snack to have on hand. And you could um, portion it out. Chef mentioned to put it in a Ziploc bag mm -hmm. and freeze it flat, but think of like ice cube trays. Oh. I mean, for kiddos, you have it frozen like yeah. that and you could just take, you know, maybe three or four. They're usually like, depending on the size of the cube, you can get them like an ounce, you know how much you're getting. But kids love that and they can just thaw out when you need it. Yeah. But it's a good- a Quick snack. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good alternative. It's beautiful apple sauce. And don't be afraid to put- I know, isn't that yeah. beautiful? It's, it's really so nice. silky. Yeah. yeah. You could leave it a little chunkier if you wanted, couldn't you, you when can. you're making your applesauce? Yes, it doesn't I love the silkiness of that, though. It's beautiful. Just put it all over. And we're going to put some. And this is going to serve about four people? I think so, or one. <laughs> <laughs> one hungry uh, Frenchman. Frenchman, yes. yeah. Uh, so you're just going to overlap the slices of apple. Those are cut fairly thin, and that's thanks to that beautiful apple peeler cutter that you had. There we go. I'm going to make enough for two. That's one apple, you see, so for. Is there such thing as using too many on there, or could you no, really you can, stack them I up? No, I think you can stack them up. You can uh, put them a little uh, closer together. You can, uh, there we go, perfect. And then uh, I'm going to mark. Just uh, for the fun of it, I'm going to make some uh, ah. design here. Like you went on a pie crust, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Let's do some crust. Very nice looking, yeah. All right, Mindy, so this is dessert. We don't want to deprive ourselves. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Having a little something sweet can help us 
and keep us from binging or really going for something high calorie. Um, when it comes to kids, are you a fan of saying eat all your dinner or eat your vegetables before you can have dessert? <laughs> I always wonder, because I was kind of that mom. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've found myself really trying to encourage my kids, yes, to eat their, At least a bite or their, two. <laughs> their food. Yeah. Um, and but what I've found too is that if they snack leading up to dinner, that has a lot to do with you know what's going on at mealtime. So trying to encourage them and put um, a variety of different foods on their dinner plate, and then really try to encourage them to eat it. So yeah, yeah I am a fan yeah. of saying yeah, I please have that policy please too. Eat. But but kids do a great job with like knowing when they're full and recognizing hunger cues too. So. Um, just knowing that as a parent that hey they're they're gonna eat until they're full and yeah gone yeah, are the days of clean them. your plate Absolutely. we don't want to yeah. force them to do that because then we might be setting them up for failure yeah. or yeah, to happen. overeat oh well that was quick <laughs> <laughs> the, Mag the magic later. TV oven has come into play so we have that apple tart I think the other one it will look even better um, it's simple, it's I, easy. I can't believe how much this, this rose. Oh, rose, yeah. yeah, because of the double oh, layer, <laughs> of, you <laughs> know? And so that's why you don't, don't be afraid to stack more apples because uh, it's gonna be uh, this. I, I couldn't find a, a little uh, shaker, a powder shaker, so I, I took a little uh, jar. You made your own. Uh, yes, okay. some yeah. film wrap, toothpick holes, and uh, you can either uh, make a little bit of syrup, uh, just a simple syrup, uh, water, sugar, mm -hmm. and uh, brush at the end when it's still warm, brush a little bit of that syrup to make it shiny and it always look better. Or you can add some, uh, some powdered sugar and uh, that will do the trick just to make it a little more festive and more presentable. Well, presentable, I think that's another key is that you've made not only what I said at the, the beginning of, of cooking our, our, our dessert, was it beautiful as well. And it has to be pleasing it to does, the eye. It does, you know, it does a, a food goes to your, to your, I mean the plate, comes to you and uh, first, uh, well, it's a look, it has to please, then you smell, and then you, 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 you taste. So you have to please those three senses at least to make a, a, good, uh, a good package. Well, uh -huh. I can tell you have a passion for food and you Thank share you. it with uh, the classes here at yeah. Second Harvest and at both of your uh, restaurants in Post Thank Falls and, and Spokane. And we are so um, lucky to have you for oh, this well, program very today. Very lucky to be here. And we're gonna get a chance to taste these incredible recipes and share with the crew. And all of the recipes we're gonna post uh, on our webpage on health matters at ksps.org so everybody can have a chance yeah. to create these delicious recipes. Mm -hmm. And again, adjust them as needed. Completely, like Mindy, uh, you know, notice uh, it's what you need. And well, sometimes it's not what you need, it's not what you want, it's, <laughs> yeah. you know. But what is appropriate for you? And Mindy had, uh, Mindy had some great points. You know, if, if uh, you feel like having a smaller potatoes, well, yeah. that's what you're gonna make have. Make those well, adjustments. Exactly, make Absolutely. those adjustments. Yeah, well, thank you. thank you both so much uh, to Chef Laurent and uh, Mindy Wallace, dietitian here for Second Harvest. Appreciate your expertise. Well, thank you for having uh, us. And talking more about nutritious meals and making those adjustments. And again, we, you can find all the recipes on the Health Matters page at ksps.org. Uh, also, the Second Harvest uh, class schedule and more about the pantry, that's 2-harvest.org. Um, and next month, be sure to join us on February 21st uh, when we will be uh, featuring Heart Health. So again, that's February 21st. Until then, I'm Teresa Lukens. Good night and bon appetit. Health Matters is made possible by our viewers, the friends of KSBS, and by Providence Healthcare. My name is Beth Perez, and I am a registered nurse, and I work at Holy Family Hospital on the labor and delivery unit. I'm about to have my second child, and I chose Providence because I love and trust the people that I work with, and why wouldn't I seek care from people that I love and trust? I'm Dr. Andrew Boulay, and when my wife had a cardiac arrest, I chose Providence because I knew that everything we needed for her complex care was available, from the emergency room to radiology to the nursing staff to the specialists we needed for her care.